Hey everyone, welcome to episode 39 of Heroic Nonsense. We're taking to the skies this time with the Cobra Falconer, once tax consultant Raptor, and his pet falcon General Ledger. Now you know why he's called that. Raptor has to be one of my favorite Cobra characters and figures from back in the day. I'm not really sure why to be honest, just something about his design, his huge falcon styled cowl, and the fact that he came with a falcon. I just really like this guy and still have him to this day with all his main accessories. So I'm really happy to bring this guy to you as part of this G.I. Joe Classified Spotlight. Join me, won't you, on this week's adventure as we do a full review, compare him to his original 80s version, and look at a ton of display and build ideas. So when I heard that Classified was bringing us Raptor, I was totally excited and couldn't wait to see him. However, I did have mixed feelings when I saw that his wings are actually mechanical wings versus his original material base cape. Now having opened him and in our collection, I am totally happy that they went this route for this release. Firstly, the main elements of the original 80s figure are all there and enhanced, so it feels like a proper Classified Raptor figure. But it also actually looks really cool and adds a ton more options for play and display. We also know that Hasbro said that they will be releasing all the characters as retro carded figures, so I'm guessing they'll make a Raptor with his original material cape as well, which will be nice for those who want him. So what do you guys think? Was it a good idea to start with the updated mechanically winged Raptor? Let me know in the comments section. Overall though, I have to say that this Raptor is truly an amazing figure. I'm really digging him. And wait until you see all the different ways he can be displayed. So let's get into it. So I figured I'd start with a shot of him up in the air. For pictures, I try to stay away from the stands as much as I can and definitely don't start with them, but Raptor just screams stand and I do love this shot. And he's one of the few flying figures we have to date, so you pretty much have to go this route. Now as a figure, like I said, always love the original. And this classified version picks up on that and just runs with it. The brown and beige colors are surprisingly vibrant and balanced so well, and the falcon motif armor and tattoos fit in perfectly so it doesn't feel like he's actually not wearing a shirt, which I guess would be a bit strange to not have one on for someone in combat. Regardless, this is Cobra that we're talking about, so from that lens, totally makes sense. I truly love the detail they put on his cowl and facial features. The sculpt is truly inspired. Really looks great and realistic as compared to the say more cartoony look of another recent release, that being Road Pig. Pulling back a bit, you can see how it all comes together for the upper body part with those line tattoos actually looking pretty cool, along with his imposing wings and shoulder pads and gauntlets, giving it all a nice cohesive look. Nice detail as well, specifically with that incredible falcon themed belt buckle and his holster hanging loosely. I really like the shade they chose for the pants, giving it a bit of texture for a more combat inspired look. I also wanted to focus in on his boots as they went all in and gave him that themed falcon claw detailing, which is a great added touch and a throwback to the original without going over the top. Surprisingly, the wings are extremely detailed, which I guess makes sense since it is a main feature of the character. It almost feels like HasLab level of detail, obviously for a much smaller vehicle. Lots of details on the metalized feathers, tail feather, and wings, and overall on the backpack portion itself, even adding in some nice bit of color. You can see there is a huge range of motion that's possible with these wings given all the joints. From the side, you can see the gun holster and other detailing they added to his gauntlets and boots like those feathers sprouting out the edges. Throughout this spotlight, we'll see these glimpses of how his wings can be maneuvered into different configurations. As for the accessories, pretty good amount including those claws which I believe have been used before including with classified nunchuck, his pet falcon general ledger, and that cowl which is removable. Both the gun and knife can be stored on the figure and used in some cool displays, though I think as a character he would rarely use his sidearm but makes sense to have one at least. Claws totally make sense for this type of figure and generally fit fine. You can probably push them in a bit higher on the hands with some elbow grease, but I prefer to keep them a bit lower down to look like extended claws on a falcon as it readies to catch its prey. Speaking of the removable cowl, he looks actually pretty cool without it, especially given the Viking-ish haircut they gave him. Like I said earlier, they did a great job on the facial features, giving him a very realistic look. One of my favorite ways to pose him is in this way, with him holding his bird, which has a tiny rounded tab to connect him to Raptor's arm so he doesn't fall off. Another great example of how poseable he is, with one outstretched wing very reminiscent of an actual falcon. I was really excited when I found all the pieces to my original Raptor figure to share with you guys here, because he truly is useless without that cape and even his falcon. Without the wings, the two figures generally stack up nicely with the original being a lighter shade of brown and of course less detail. However, the main cues are there including the feathers sticking out of the boots and gauntlets and the feathered style shoulder armor and most importantly that falcon head cowl. I have to say that I actually like the falcon on the classified raptor even more than the original one, though both are great and totally make the figure. 
Obviously way more detail on the classified figure, especially in the coloring and eyes. You can also see all the detail they added to the shoulder pads and the necklace that they reproduced for classified raptor. A major difference is the added tattoos that they gave classified raptor which totally fit and add to the overall look of the figure. They didn't go over the top at all so it looks really good in my opinion. They also added the same style belt which is great and the side mounted gun. Here you can see the falcon claw motif they grabbed from the original which is a nice homage even though not generally very realistic as far as combat boots go. The biggest difference is of course the cape versus the updated mechanical wings. I'm really interested to see what they do with the retro carded version that they should inevitably release which I may just get for nostalgia purposes, though it might be a really nice figure in its own right. They did however copy and update the overall design really well. And to close this section off, the two versions of his falcon. I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't give us a version with his wings open like the original, or the ability to extend them. Again, I'm thinking they may do that for their retro version, but who knows. Which do you guys prefer, closed or opened? They did however do a great job on the details and really give us that hunter falcon look. This is a great updated homage to the original and for me a must have given the iconic nature of the original figure and character. Alright, let's get into the good stuff with some different display ideas, and there are surprisingly a good amount for a figure without a full size vehicle. As I had mentioned earlier, displaying Raptor almost necessitates having him in a flying configuration. I also chose to use Nunchuck here because he is a ninja who also uses similar claws to Raptor. I feel that could be a real interesting matchup. I also really like the way I positioned him here and he can look great in a group display. Or alone. I also wanted to clearly show you guys how I set him up so you can replicate it if you like. As for flying poses, this is one of my favorite. I think this is an incredibly dynamic pose that works well in a display especially where you might be tight on space. I like to call this my angel of death pose. When you think about it, it's incredibly scary. Imagine you were in a battle and out of nowhere this winged cobra demon dives in and starts pulling you off the ground with his claws digging into you as he carries you off. Reminds me of those nature shows where you see one of those birds of prey carrying off an animal or throwing a mountain goat off a cliff. Again, showing you how this looks isolated from the rest of the display in case you would like to replicate or do something similar. You have to get it balanced just right, but it definitely works. Now for a real aggressive action shot, Raptor raining down on the enemy alongside some Cobra fly pods who are providing some aerial support. However, you can also do a version where he's grounded and preparing to take to the skies with his team as the Televipers one by one begin launching alongside Raptor who is in command of this unit. The more the merrier I say, and depending on how we go in our display, we may put him exactly in this way with our four trouble bubbles. Could look really cool. Right now though, since we haven't opened our Iron Grenadiers and Grenadier Bats yet, I have put Raptor in a lonely display which currently only houses Metalhead. Something about these two together just works for me. Perhaps it's the way they both have very dynamic elements to their designs. Regardless, I really like the way these two display together. What do you guys think about this unholy union? For some solo action shots, I grabbed some of the accessories that came with other classified figures which can fit into some of the tighter spaces in his wings to give him this aura of being shot at while using his wings to block the incoming bullets. It again also showcases one of the many ways you can display Raptor with his wings. Given all the points of articulation on the backpack section, he really does feel like he has unlimited possibilities for display. And probably one of my favorite ground poses, Raptor enrobing himself in his cloak of metal. Kinda has a Dark Knight feel. You really can invoke a bunch of different feelings with his different poses. Which of these poses is your favorite so far? Hard to choose, right? And since his wings can form some type of protection, I thought he'd be a cool pairing with some alley vipers as they do a sweep of a captured city searching for resistance and Joes. Nice clear image of the figure you're getting with the wings. I guess this box style is growing on me a bit, at least for the deluxe figures. The only problem is that when the figure is out, the box doesn't hold much appeal as a collector item. The sides now are where all the great art is located, and no different in this case. Really cool image of Raptor and his falcon here. I love this image of Raptor soaring through the sky with his outstretched wings and some cobra fly pods as well. Though wish he had General Ledger with his wings outstretched. A bit deceptive here and the other side for which these symbols are always included. So that brings us to the end of this week's spotlight of one of my very favorite figures from the original line. Really appreciate those who made it to the end, hope you enjoyed. Lots of amazing reviews coming up in January as the boys open up the extra special Transformers, G.I. Joe and other toys we got them for the holidays. So make sure you subscribe so you can come back here and see what goodness we have in store for you at the beginning of 2025. See you next time. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Drop more.